Okay, so we just did a few examples calculating these kinds of scattering um, matrix elements, and that was, you know, a pain in the ass. So basically, um, instead of doing that, we can work with Feynman diagrams. And so basically, there will be a Feynman diagram for each um, kind of term in our infinite expansion here. And from those diagrams, you can just basically write down the answer instead of doing all the, the cancer math, you know. So uh, I'm not going to go through all the rules because honestly, I mean, the, the general rules aren't that confusing, but as far as the rules for drawing diagrams, I'm a little confused. But we can at least work through the first two examples uh, again that we did only using Feynman diagrams. So the first one was this, uh, you know, we got this A particle and it annihilates into this particle-antiparticle pair. And basically the Feynman diagram for that looks like this. And the basic rule of Feynman diagrams are for each vertex, we write down a factor of minus ig, 2 pi to the 4, and then this delta function that basically conserves momentum at this vertex. So in this case, it's almost trivial to write down this answer, um, which is what we got when we explicitly calculated this using this first term here. So uh, yeah, obviously that's much quicker. And then we can look at the next example we did, which was this uh, two, two B particles scattering off each other. And the Feynman diagrams look like this. And now we have, so we have two vertexes. We're going to have two factors of minus ig and 2 pi to the 4 and two delta functions. But we also have this internal leg. And basically, whenever you have an internal leg, you also have this factor of the propagator uh, where you, you integrate over this kind of momentum of this interior point. And basically where that's coming from is uh, for these more complex diagrams, those involve these higher order terms. And remember, we had to time order those, and that involved both normal order operators as well as the Feynman propagators. So that's why the Feynman propagator is popping up uh, in these uh, terms. So uh, in this case, we just have this one internal kind of branch. So we have this factor of the propagator, integrator for k. And we have our two delta functions that just enforce conservation momentum at each of these uh, vertices. So in this case, first one, uh, just p1 minus p1 prime minus k. And the other one's k plus p2 minus p2 prime. And anyway, we can just do one of the integrals over k. So for example, this one, that replaces k with p1 minus p1 prime. And so that will just take care of this k down here. And uh, and then we'll get still have this other delta function remaining, which again just enforces conservation of momentum and energy. The sum of the momenta for the first two particles has to equal the sum of the momenta for the other, for the new two particles. And uh, so we get this thing, and this is half of what we got when we explicitly computed this amplitude. And that's because, um, I guess, some I, I just make some vague argument about bosons. And if we have two particles, you can't tell which one's which. So you should also add this other uh, diagram, where basically you just swap p1 prime and p2 prime. And obviously, this from this, we don't have to do any more work. We can just take this expression and replace p1 prime with p2 prime, of course. So we get the other half of um, you know, the amplitude we found before. Um, so yeah, uh, at least, the, well, I guess the most important thing is conceptually, um, you know, we know what Feynman diagrams are now. We know what they represent. And for any particular uh, theory, you have to figure out, you know, what are the rules for these diagrams? How do you draw them? But once you do, it's much 
Um, you know, it's probably quicker to figure out how to do that than explicitly calculating these terms that we did like we did before. Uh, so, yeah.